Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with legendary investor and great friend of the channel, Mr. Greg Dickerson. How are you doing, sir? Doing great, Michael. Good to see you. Nice to see you as well. Hey, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is I think there's a lot of kind of talk out there in the social media world about everything's about money, right? Money, 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 money. I want to flip the script and talk about happiness because I truly believe if you are happy, you've already won. If you are truly happy, I don't talk about like lying to yourself, but if you wake up every day and you are happy with whatever you are doing, in my opinion, you've won. So what I wanted to do is kind of tie those together. I want to tie the word happiness and money together because I think a lot of people out there assume it takes millions or perhaps billions of dollars to be happy. And I don't think that's true. So I wanted to get your opinion on that. Well, anybody who says money can't buy happiness doesn't have any. So that's <laughs> number one. <laughs> and it's the old story, right? You know, yeah. money can't buy happiness. You know, I, I was just as happy with, you know, 200 million as I am with 100 million. So, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. so there's two ways to look at it, right? So mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's funny. I'm just kidding around, just joking. But yeah, happiness, <laughs> is something, <laughs> happiness is something that comes from within and being satisfied that you're doing what you were created to do, the best that you uh, can do with the abilities that you were given, God-given talents, why you were put on this earth, fulfilling your purpose. That's where true happiness comes from, Great. helping others, contributing, making an impact in the world. Money's great because, you know, money buys things. You need money. You need money like you need air, right? You can't live without it. And it's nice to be able to afford the things that you want, not have to worry about what happens if your car breaks down or your tire goes flat or your refrigerator dies. You know, that's difficult. And I've been in those positions where, you know, I, I, I was week to week when I first started out, I wasn't making a lot of money and I had to worry about those things. So not having to worry about stuff like that is nice. It'll give you peace of mind but it's not going to give you happiness. Like you said, true happiness comes from within in the satisfaction that, you know, you're satisfied and happy with what it is you're doing with, with wherever it is, whatever, whatever it is. But unfortunately, like you said, we're in this world of social media, you know, win Lambo, you know, yeah. win Ferrari, you know, win mansion, you know, and all that kind of stuff where, you know, the status symbols of life are what people perceive as success. But I'll tell you where true happiness comes from. Number one, for me, it's having no backlog in my life. Nobody's ever hunting me down for something, right? It's what it, it, it's all done. I take care of everything as I go along. I have no stress, no anxiety, zero backlog. I take care of everything as it goes. So there's nothing weighing me down where I'm constantly behind the eight ball trying to catch up, you know, things like that. The happiness that I get out of things, the fulfillment that I get, uh, nothing makes me happier than helping other people. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I get more of a kick out of seeing somebody else succeed that I've helped than any deal I've ever done or I could ever do. It doesn't okay. really matter. And of course, I'm not a billionaire. I haven't made a billion dollars. But, you know, at some point, you know, those things are fun to strive for when you're young to get to a point to where you don't have to worry about money. But once you get there and it's no longer a concern, it's no longer about that. And in the world of business, you know, it's, it's, it's a game. How big can I go? How much can I scale it? But at a point, even that becomes boring. Mm -hmm. where you start thinking about other things like, why was I put on this earth? And I think maybe I was put on this earth, earth to do some great things that you just can't do, you know, from, from a financial standpoint in terms of impact. Of course, the more money you have, the more impact you can make and all that kind of stuff, but in certain areas. But, you know, at the end of the day, for me, it's about, you know, helping, giving back, making an impact and, you know, doing that. I'm, you know, deals just don't excite me anymore like that does. No. One of the things that I, I, I totally agree with that helping others. In fact, I think I can reach it. Where is it? There it is. So something I did last year, I think it was June 1st. Oh, no, it's on my sign. June 1st of last year is I wanted to figure out what this YouTube, YouTube channel was doing, right? We talk every week, six other people do. Is it helping anybody? So something I did is I created a contest called the 500. Basically, if you close a deal, I mail you a card, right? And I was so confident in this, I bought 1,500 of these because <laughs> I want to send out 1,500. And I get a kick, right? Just this morning on the Daily Financial News, I read off four names of people that are getting cards, right? So almost every day we're reading somebody else got a deal. And you're so right. I get, I put a stamp on this, throw it in the mail, I get a kick out of it. So yeah, helping others <laughs> is fun. It is. And it's challenging because, you know, you and I can go do deals all day long, right? For us, it's easy. Yeah. yeah. But to teach somebody else how to do it and help somebody else do it and help somebody else get to those levels, you know, that's what's fun and exciting. And I mean, that's what I've done my entire career, building businesses, you know, with and through other people, building my own companies with and through other people. 
it's just so much fun. I and mean, I've been a coach my whole career, you know, mm -hmm. with my kids growing up in their sports and in the community and events and things. It's just, it's hard to explain how rewarding that is. You know, I'm sure people know it and get it. And, you know, when you go volunteer and you do something, it makes you, it makes you feel good. And that's the kind of stuff of happiness that no amount of money can replace. And oftentimes, the more money you make, the more money you want, the more things you want, and that's an endless hole. Mm, that's yeah. that's a hole in a cycle that can never be fulfilled because those aren't the things that fulfill you and you know ain't nobody getting out of here alive you can't mm -hmm. take things with you yeah. you know so the we all have a you know, we're on borrowed time you only have so much time on this planet and <clears throat> the real question is what's the highest and best use of that time in terms of making the impact you want to make and leaving the mark you know on this planet that you want to leave and those are the things that i think about every day yeah, where this really came from is I had another conversation with um, a business owner, a, a house flipper, a real estate investor. And I can't tell you how many times they come out of the gate saying, I want to do 50 deals a year or I want a thousand, just big, big things. And I always, I always get back to, you know, I try to ask why, you know, somewhere between five and seven times, like why, 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 why? And I can't tell you how many times the answer comes back. Ultimately, I want to coach my kids in baseball. I want to coach. I'm like, how old are your kids? Eight. Like, well, you've only got so many time before they're, you know, in high school and then they don't have any time to deal with you. Right. So it, it is, it is so often, it's like these big numbers, they want to do this, but they're, they're missing the time frame, Right. And, and what I tell them is you can get there on a lot less. You don't need a thousand units. Maybe you need 12. You don't need to flip 50 homes. Maybe you need to flip five, figure out where your happiness ratio is. And it's probably not 50 and it's not a thousand. So it's, it's really a struggle for some people. Yeah, and it's the wrong thing to be focusing on. So the real question is, what are your needs? Is it, is it, a, is it a lump sum goal? Is it a monthly goal? Yes. You know, what's that number? And focus on that. How can, what's the quickest, most efficient, easiest way with the least amount of time, energy, and effort possible to get to that goal? Then go after that. And in business, and you know, there, there's really two ways to make money, right? You have a low ticket item and you do a lot of volume or you have a high ticket item and you do less volume, yep. you know? So when it came to real estate investing, I was always looking for, you know, the big deals, the chunks, you know, how can I make the biggest chunks mm -hmm. and, you know, in any business I was in and growing and scaling it from there. And the example is when I first started out my first year in business, I did, you know, 250,000 in gross revenues. Second year, I did like 750 and that was spread out over probably a hundred jobs or more, you know, little jobs and then 200 little jobs. And, you know, it's, it's a high, it's a grind, it's a hustle. And then I started getting into bigger and bigger deals and, you know, bigger and bigger chunks. And you start figuring out, man, it's much easier to do it this way. And mm -hmm. so you want to start with that income goal or that lump sum goal or whatever that is and focus on that, not how many deals can I do. But again, it's that status symbol. People like to go out there and that ego thing and say, yeah, man, I did a hundred deals last year. I'm like, well, how much money did you take on? Well, you know, I didn't really make that much, but a hundred <laughs> deals. Yeah, that, you know, it's a hustle. It's a grind. It's expensive, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, and it's, I've got a client I'm coaching that he's a coach and a mentor in his space of residential house flippers and, mm -hmm. you know, Burr strategy, that kind of thing. He's got a big network, does events, all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, been around a long time. I mean, he's got 1500 to 2000 students in his program and I'm coaching him on different aspects. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he, he's been talking to some of the top house flippers in the country that are doing, you know, some of these guys will do three to 500 deals a year wow. and they're spending, you know, millions of dollars a year in marketing and staff and overhead and teams and all that. And they're making less money than he is on 10 or 12 flips. You know, he'll make, he'll make, you know, a million dollars on 10 flips this year. Yeah. And, and again, I've been doing this a long time. You and I both know how that high overhead will eventually make you do bad deals or skinny deals, whatever you ever call it. And then the economy turns and bingo, bango, done. Well, the thing is, when you're doing high volume, you have to do a lot of marketing. And the problem is when the market turns, you know, you're still spending that hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a month in marketing, mm -hmm. then that hundred, two hundred thousand a month in overhead to do those those kinds of yeah, volume. Of course. Market turns, you know, it can be two or three months before you figure out, wait a minute, yeah. it's over. Yeah. And you've already spent Whoops. that, then you got to start unwinding it. So it it can be a big problem. And they and a lot of those guys have gone through it, but you know, again, the key is if you have a goal, focus on what that number is first in terms of the dollars that you need. It all boils down to dollars. We either need a lump sum or we need a monthly income that we're trying to replace so that you, you can yeah. own your time. And what I tell everybody is, you know, figure out how you can replace your monthly income, your monthly needs. You know, that's wealth. Yeah. Wealth is 
being able to maintain your lifestyle and never have to work another day. That's wealth. You know, rich, you can have a big chunk of money, but it can go away. But if you have that sustainable wealth, the ability to do whatever you want, whatever you want, not have to worry about income, that's really what you want to focus on. Then, you know, you can pursue all of those other things. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I keep telling people, right, they, they hear one rental at a time. How'd you do it? Learn your market, all that stuff. But I'm like, there's this whole get your money right part of this that nobody wants to talk about because it's not sexy. And that was really understanding what was our monthly nut. Uh, what, what could we adjust? Because again, that was, you know, that was step one. And then, then you go from there. So yeah. And don't cut back. <laughs> if you want to have your Starbucks, if you want to have, you know, your dinner out, you want to go to the movies, you want to take that vacation, quantify that. That's yep. $10,000 a year. That's going to cost me. Then go figure out how you can get an asset that will cover that so that you don't have to cut back. Totally agree. Don't do what Michael did. Don't take yeah. his advice. Yeah, exactly. Don't, don't cut your expenses 50%. Yeah. Grow them. <laughs> grow them. Grow, grow. That's amazing. Hey, Greg, how can people find you and get part of your world? Yeah, gregdickerson.com. Everything's there. YouTube channel, podcast. Go check it out. Awesome. Thanks, man.